everyone. I'm Pastor Veronica, and I'm going to be sharing with you today some practical steps for writing goals. I don't know about you, but I know for me in the beginning, um, it could be a little overwhelming with setting some goals. So what I want to do today is just give you some practical steps, very simple and easy for writing these goals. So find yourself a quiet place and let's get started. We're going to jump right into step one. First step is pray. We can't do anything and we shouldn't do anything without prayer. We want God's influence over our um, goal setting process. And prayer will make sure our goals are lined up with God's will for our life. So you might be asking yourself, what should I pray for? Pray and ask God for vision and direction for this upcoming year. Ask God for his wisdom and his desires. Ask God for goals that are lined up according to his purpose for your life. In Galatians 5.16, it says, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. If we aren't praying and seeking God's will for our goal setting process, we can end up setting goals that are self-centered and therefore unfulfilling. In Psalms 32, 8, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. I know I want God to guide me along in my life. I know I want the absolute best path for my life. And I know that he is the one that's going to provide that for me. We're going to go into step number two. Start with the big picture in mind. So looking at the big picture for me shows me where I'm starting and it shows me the end result. Ask yourself, where am I now and what do I want to achieve? And then what does that look like to you? So what this is going to require is a little bit of dreaming. It's going to require you to envision your future. In Habakkuk 2.3, it says, this vision is for a future time. It describes the end and it will be fulfilled. It seems slow and if it seems slow in coming, wait patiently for it will surely take place. It will not be delayed. Now, I do have to give you a disclaimer. When you begin to dream and get vision from God, you, can, you can't let past failures or um, um, past um, circumstances or obstacles determine or alter your goals. We have to think as if there are no limits. Philippians 3.13 says, no, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. So for me, I'm not going to think about last year's goals or what maybe I didn't accomplish last year. I'm going to stay focused on the future and keep my eyes on the Lord. Step number three, be specific. The word specific means precise, defined or fixed. God is specific with our lives and our purpose and instructions for our lives. So we should be specific with our goals. So what you should do is find specific areas in your life that you need to set goals in. So I'm going to give you an example of mine. My areas that I, I make goals for are my spiritual life, personal, physical, marriage, family, and financial. Now, if you're single, you might have these goals, spiritual, personal, physical relationships, which would include friends, family, brother or sister, and then also financial and educational goals. The more specific you are with the goals, the more powerful they are. How do I make my goals more specific? It might be a question that you have. We're going to want to start with the statement, I will, instead of I want, or I'll try, or I'll, I hope. Also, make your goals measurable with a time frame. So let me just give you some examples really quick of a general goal versus a specific goal. A general goal would be, I want to make more money this year. A specific goal 
would be, I will make 10,000 more in 2021 than I made in 2020. And I will go back to school and get the certification for that promotion. An example of another general goal, and I know a lot of us probably have it on our goal list, is I wanna be healthier. But a sp that's a general. Specific would be, I will exercise five days a week for 30 minutes at 6 a.m. That's a specific goal. So that was step number three. Now step number four, we wanna write our goals down. And that's pretty self-explanatory, but you might ask, why should I write my goals down? I have it in my head, I know what I'm doing. Writing your goals down is a first step of your goal becoming a reality. This is a spiritual principle. First put it on paper, then it will be. Isaiah 38 says, now go and write down these goals, write them in a book. They will stand until the end of time as a witness. This scripture is showing me that writing goals down will keep us accountable to accomplish that goal. We need goals written so they are visible and accessible. Why? So we can review them and see where we are in achieving them. And the final reason we should write down goals is God commands us to write, down, write the vision down. In Habakkuk 2, 2, it says, Then the Lord said to me, Write my answer plainly on tablets so that a runner can, ca can carry the correct message to others. So God commands us to write the vision down. And our final step, step number five, is to create a plan of action. A goal without a plan is just a dream. This is where we will set up strategy on how goals will be accomplished. In Proverbs 21, five, it says, good planning and hard work lead to prosperity, but hasty shortcuts lead to poverty. It is only with good planning and hard work that a goal will be accomplished. So that's it. We'll review these steps really quick. Um, step number one is pray. Step number two, start with the big picture in mind. Step number three, be specific. And step number four, write them down. Finally, step number five, create a plan of action. Thank you so much for joining me today. God bless you and have a wonderful day.